Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Nicole Wine. I am one of the fellows this semester, and next semester I'll start as an uh, assistant professor at University of Michigan. Um, so this talk that I'll give right now will have no technical content, essentially. I don't think I'll even state any results. What I'm going to do is basically state a bunch of problems, and my hope is that if you find any overlap with um, the type of problems that I like, then we can talk. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is kind of like filling in this chart. These are three research areas that I've worked in and that I like a lot. So one of them is about shortest paths and also includes some kind of structural existential shortest path type problems. This one is for uh, dynamic and also online problems. So this is when like your input is changing over time and you need to get an algorithm that copes with this changing input. And the third one is like fine grained complexity and reductions between different problems to show hardness. Um, and then for each of these, I will write some problems that I've worked on in the past and then also some open problems that I like. Um, but before I go into any of this, I want to first tell you about a specific problem that I'm working on right now. Um, and if you're interested in this problem, come talk to me. This is a thing where like, we have some partial results and I think we probably need some more ideas to get over the finish line and um, would be interested in working with people here if you're interested in this problem. So, okay, this is a problem called the vantage point selection problem. If you think you've heard of this problem, you haven't heard of the version that I'm about to say because it hasn't been published at all. So there's one paper about this problem, not by me, but by others, and it's not online yet. And they defined this problem based on a connection to like, they worked with like networking people and defined. So this is like a shortest path type theoretical combinatorial problem that was motivated originally by like some networking application of like finding bottleneck capacity edges in the internet. Okay, so here's the problem. So we have a graph and we also have that each edge has an unknown capacity. So these numbers are capacities, they're not weights. The edge, the graph might also be weighted, but I'm just ignoring the weights for the simplicity of this picture. And what we can do as the algorithm is we know the entire graph, but we don't know these capacities. And we're basically trying to discover what these capacities are. And what can we do to query the graph? We can query an individual vertex and it gives us the following information. So it reveals for each, every other vertex U, what is the capacity of the min capacity edge on the shortest path from V to U? So let's assume that um, there are unique shortest paths between any pair of vertices. And let's say this is U, for example, and this is the shortest path from V to U then it will reveal the minimum capacity edge, which in this case is two, because two is smaller than six. And so similarly, like if this were U, it would reveal this edge. And what happens when you query V is that it reveals for all of the U in the graph, this minimum edge. And so these pink bold numbers are what it would reveal if you query V. In particular, like this one would not be revealed because if when you when this is you, the minimum capacity edge on this path is three instead of four. Did that does that make sense so far? The definition of what it means to query something. Okay, so then once you so then what is our goal? Our goal is to like query vertices in the graph so that we are revealing many edges in the graph. And in particular, what we would like to do is the following. So let's let opt be the max number of edges that you could reveal over all possible queries. So the best vertex I could possibly query, how many edges does that reveal? And what I would like to do now is to bound the number of queries that I need in order to reveal order opt edges. And my algorithm, of course, doesn't know the capacities ahead of time. Okay. This is the max number of single query opt. Yes. Okay. Yes. When you reveal, do you also reveal the, the edge or just the capacity of that edge? Um, so I know all of the edges ahead of time. Like I already know the entire graph. It's just that 
answer your question. Uh, so when, when you reveal that the, the, the main capacity is two, do I know that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know this particular edge has capacity two. Yes. Thank you. Good. Just checking, shortest path is number of edges, nothing about the capacities. One more time. Uh, the shortest path is just the number of edges, not the nothing about the capacities. Uh, yes, the shortest path can be on number of edges, or there could be underlying weights which define the shortest path, and that's nothing to do with capacities. And if there's a tie, uh, let's assume it's unique. Okay, thanks. Okay, good. So that's the end of uh, this question. And one kind of cool thing about this problem is that we actually don't know anything tri non-trivial about it. Um, Let's talk afterwards if you're interested in knowing like what are the trivial bounds and what we're trying to achieve here. Um, but this is like a very open problem. Okay, so now back to um, more of an overview of the types of problems that I like. So let's start with this section. So these are past problems I've worked on in the area of shortest paths. Um, oh, and one more thing, I also like in general combinatorial problems that arise from different application domains, such as the problem you just heard about. So for this one, um, one thing I've worked on is like these structural problems of spanners and hop sets, which is something Jason mentioned as well. So these are problems of like, I'm given a graph and I want to sparsify it while preserving the approximate distances in the graph. That's what a spanner is. And a hop set is a related notion where we're trying to actually kind of do the opposite, add edges to the graph so that the you can get from anywhere to anywhere else in only a few number of hops while again preserving approximate distances. And there are a bunch of these problems in like structural graph um, theory, which is we, where we ask the question of, given a graph, can I simplify it in some sense while preserving some important property of it? And just like last week, we submitted a paper to ITCS uh, introducing a new problem that is under this umbrella. So what we do here is like preserve the structure of the shortest paths in the graph, where the goal is to minimize uh, the edge weights in the graph. Happy to talk more about that after. Um, this is another recent paper that was also submitted to ICCS about uh, disjoint, the disjoint shortest paths problem. And then now for some open problems here that I like. One of them is the kind of curious not shortest path problem in directed graphs. So this is a problem that's actually, if you've been on the second floor and you've seen the whiteboards up there, it's written up there. It was written up there by my former PhD advisor, Virginia Williams. And when I was a student, we worked on this problem together. And I think it's a interesting problem. The problem is exactly what it sounds like. You're given an unweighted directed graph. You're given a source and sync pair S and T, and you just want to know, give me a path from S to T that is not a shortest path. And we don't even know if there's a polynomial time algorithm for this problem. It's The question is, I guess, prove NP hardness or show polynomial time. There's And it's known for undirected graphs that you can get it in polynomial time. There's another problem that kind of falls in a similar category where we don't know if it's in P or not. And again, it's a problem on directed graphs. Um, where it is known to be in P for the undirected version. And this is the K disjoint shortest paths problem. And in this problem, we're given a set of K source sync pairs, S1, T1, S2, T2, S3, T3, et cetera. And what we want to do is find shortest paths between each pair of terminals, and we want them to all be disjoint. This is not to be confused with a similar problem, which says among all disjoint paths, which one is the shortest? We're not trying to do that. That's already known to be hard. This is every single individual path must individually be shortest. And maybe it's not possible. So in some cases, you would just return, no, you cannot do this. But if it is possible, then I want to return, what are these shortest disjoint paths? And it's not known to be in P in particular for constant K. For example, three disjoint paths is not known. Okay, so now let me move on to the second category. So here's a, couple, a few problems that I've worked on in the dynamic and online settings. In the dynamic one, these are just some very classical problems like coloring, independent set, shortest paths. And in general, the model for dynamic algorithms is I'm given a graph and edges are being inserted and deleted from the graph and I need to return, for example, a coloring of the graph after every single update. 
Uh, for online problems, I've recently worked on this like data structures problem called online list labeling, which I won't mention here. But in general, I like online problems and data structures problems. Now, let me tell you about my favorite probably open problem that falls into this um, rectangle, which is the dynamic edge orientation problem. So in this problem, I'm going to state to you the simplest version of it that is not known. And the simplest version of it is kind of deceptively simple in that the input is literally just a tree. So we have a tree and it's dynamic. And so at every point, like at every point in time, there's going to be an edge that's added or deleted, but we have the promise that at every point in time, it's always going to be a forest. And what we would like to do is to orient each one of these edges in such a way that the out degree of every vertex is a constant. So for example, here's an orientation. Uh, this orientation has maximum out degree two. But in general, uh, you can get maximum out degree one by just saying, let's pick a root and let's direct all of the edges up towards the root. But the challenge here is to maintain it dynamically. So subject to edge insertions and deletions, we may need to sometimes change the orientation of some edges. So for example, this could be deleted, this could be inserted, and we might need to change the orientation of some edges. And the question is, essentially comes down to how many edge orientation flips do we need to do per update? There are some non-trivial bounds known for this problem, but there's still uh, large gaps. And in particular, the answer could be constant. We don't know. The best is log n. Um, but it could be the case that you only need like a constant number of edge flips, which would be pretty cool, uh, regardless of the size of the graph. Um, one cool thing about this problem is that uh, if you were able to improve this, it, it is used as a subroutine in many other papers. And so um, it would directly improve the running times of a number of different problems in the area of dynamic algorithms, specifically on graphs that have bounded arboricity or degeneracy. Okay, so now for the last one, uh, my main focus here has been on um, doing fine-grained reductions and conditional hardness for problems about uh, approximate diameter. So diameter being what is the largest distance in the whole graph, and we would like to get an approximate answer for this. And um, there's kind of a series of different reductions and related problems and a whole family of results around this. And this, is, this was the main focus of my PhD thesis a couple years ago. So if you're interested in open problems, then you can take a look at the open problems page of my PhD thesis. And uh, that's the end. Thank you. Oh, any, any questions? So uh, for the non-directed pathing, if I want a yes-no question, you're simply asking, given a directed graph in S and D, are all paths of the same length? That's that's the problem. Yes. Um, all simple paths of the same length. That's a, I have now heard. So I know definitely it's not known if you want to find a not shortest path. Detecting whether or not there is a not shortest path. <coughs> um, I think that's also not known. I'm not 100% sure. I think it's also not known. Any, any other? So in, this, in the, the question about dynamic edge orientation, you said it's log n. Is that only for trees, or that's known for some larger category of graphs? It's known for graphs of bounded arboricity, so uh -huh. it, aka bounded degeneracy. So for this class, this is like defined as the class of graphs that such that there exists an edge orientation with bounded out degree. And so if if you have a graph from this class and let's and it and it allows you to do constant out degree, uh -huh. uh, then you can dynamically achieve also log n. Uh -huh. uh, is that amortized or amortized? Amortized. Actually there have been some worst case results as well, but the question the open question is about amortized. Is this assuming like into the running time or like down the running time? Yeah, so great question. So you're asking like because I stated it in terms of how many edge flips do you need, right? So it turns out there has already been 
this is a very interesting thing about this problem. So it turns out that we already know an optimal algorithm up to constant factors. We just don't know how to analyze it. And so if you could show that the number of flips is bounded, it would immediately imply that there is an algorithm that achieves that number of flips. So that was that algorithm is very strong. You just become existence for every instance. Right? Yes. Okay, well, thanks a lot.